So, my name is Mike. Um, I'm part of PUSH. We, um, we're based out of Mars here, and we're Responsible for this fine shoot. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So, These are a great host for the day. Yeah, we're hosting, so thought I'd chat. Um, so what we're doing is we're developing a wearable device that I'm wearing right now that is for weight training. So it tracks and analyzes your weight training specifically. Um, so things that it measures, it counts your sets and reps. It uh, measures force, power, velocity, that type of thing. Um, and all sorts of, kind of esoteric um, metrics that only like, really high level athletes and coaches care about. Um, but yeah, so we, we launched an Indiegogo campaign um, a couple weeks ago. We just met our goal and we have a few weeks left, so things are going well. Um, my co-founder, Rami, talked last time, so I just wanted to kind of give an update. Um, so, I don't know, did he show the video last time? No, he didn't. No? All right. It's a pretty pretty cool video. We got some pretty high-end um, producers to do it. So, I kind of want to show it off. Does it actually do that? Like, <laughs> because <this thing? laughs> I need some of that. That's it. Um, basically, we've been talking to a lot of um, a lot of people in the sports strength, um, and starting to be talking to a lot of um, people in the physio rehab space. We're we're really excited about that angle as well. So we're doing kind of pro sports, elite athletes, elite coaches, but we're also kind of our next iteration is going to be branching into the health, uh, sports medicine, and rehab side of things. Um, so yeah, it's going well, um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Can, can you pass it around? Sure, yeah, so this is just an uh, industrial design um, lockup, so it's no electronics, it doesn't actually work. It's 3D, 3D printed. <laughs> How is the metro strength? I mean, what's the sensor? So it's a uh, IMU, which is a uh, gyroscope and accelerometer, and so from that we can determine uh, peak force, peak power, peak velocity. Um, and so, like a lot of people I see are wearing like Jabo and Up or the Fitbit or Fuel Band. Um, a lot of those are great. Um, daily activity trackers that just kind of give you a general sense of how, how much your, basically your arm is moving or how many steps you've taken. What we're trying to do is um, target people who care about like actually how strong they're getting or how they're performing at the gym. Um, and so metrics like power and force and velocity are important for people who care about that. No, so we're taking pre-orders right now. Um, 
we're doing a beta test at the we should be we're spinning out boards right now um, and we're starting the beta test before the end of the year and then delivering in spring 2014. What's the type of data output? Um, sorry, you had a question. I mean, I do give you velocity and acceleration. How are you getting force and power? Yeah, so so um, we yeah we get acceleration and orientation from the gyro, um, and then acceleration times mass gives you force. Um, so you have to input like the ratio. Yeah, exactly. So there's two different kind of use use cases. Um, one is when you're working with a trainer or a coach, and so typically what they do is they print out a sheet for you with what you're supposed to do for the next week or three weeks, um, and so it's got the exercise, the amount of weight, reps, and sets. So if you're working with a coach or a trainer, they can go on to our web portal, develop a program for you, and send it directly to your phone. And then you look, say, yep, let's do this, and then it's very easy from that standpoint. So you just like, say, go, and then you work out. Um, whereas for some people, in other use cases, they don't have a coach or a trainer, so they just go into the gym. In that case, you'll be selecting an exercise, say, you know, bench press, 200 pounds, 10 reps, 3 sets, and then you work out. So there is some entry. Yeah, so our first iteration, um, we're developing custom algorithms for every exercise, and you have to tell it which exercise you're doing. We're starting to get good at the machine learning algorithms that will um, enable us to detect. Yeah, to detect what exercises you're doing. So, like, eventually, I don't know exactly how long that'll be, depending on how much funding and how many great minds we can put at the problem. Mm -hmm. Thanks. <laughs> um, hopefully, we'll for the next round, we'll be able to detect what exercise you're doing. So you don't. Have to do anything. Mm -hmm. Are you had a question? Uh, data output. How, how accessible is the data that um, Very, what are you looking for, like CSV? Or? Yeah, like, like, how, like, uh, like raw data. Like, like, can we pure raw data versus like output, like what you put in the app? Like, where are you sort of trying to share? Right, so, I mean, we have access to it, obviously, the raw data, so we're kind of, we're not 100% sure on how, how we're exactly going to deliver that. Um, we're definitely going to have an API so you can get at the, get at the data, because there's a lot of coaches that we've been talking to um, who already use certain software packages, so they want our data to be fed into theirs. Um, but yeah, the, there's lots of people who just want the raw data, so I'm sure we'll make that available in some. Uh, two questions. One, is it worn only at the gym, and then you take it off at other times? Yeah. Yeah. And second question, are you guys ever going to aim towards having it almost like beats and say, okay, we know you're doing this exercise and you're doing it bad form, bad form? Right. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Yeah, so that kind of gets a bit into the physio um, type stuff and the rehab. Um, form is actually really hard to get. Um, Especially if you're just wearing one sensor, it's really hard. You know, you've got a lot of chains, um, a lot of joints. So we're looking into like two sensors so that you can actually get a um, more specific idea of what your form looks like. We're also developing a, developing a belt. We've made a belt so that this sensor can go around your waist um, because for some exercises, it's more important to know where your center mass is than um, long story short, form itself, like by itself, is really tricky to get just from acceleration of gyroscopes. Could you see in the future potentially having four or five and then having a program that can develop a personalized fitness training for you based on sensors? <coughs> yeah, I mean, again, the, kind of the next rev once we have tons of data to play with and our machine and algorithm machine learning algorithms are running, um, we'll be able to do a lot more predictive um, stuff, like you're lifting too heavy or you should be going faster if you want to you know, be an explosive athlete. 
Um, so we don't actually need a ton of sensors to do that kind of um, prescriptive feedback. Um, yeah, it's just about getting lots of data. Experts input their data and their knowledge into our systems. Considering, uh, sorry, if you're considering eventually like opening this for uh, for uh, like any developers who develop apps for push, like uh, I want to like I have API guys that I can and uh, you have public API like. Any developer can go there and say, oh, well, we specialize more for people who want to use push for right. uh, uh, like, uh, hyper, uh, I don't know, some, something yeah, really yeah. specialized stuff. And you guys don't have to develop all the software. But yeah, the we're discussing it. It's, it's, we haven't had a hard stance on it. But yeah, we're definitely talking to a lot of people who want kind of more specialized uh, applications <coughs> for this. So. Um, right now we're focusing just on weight training and validating our device and our technology. Um, but then the next step, the next, you know, the quick next step is to do sports specific stuff. So talk to <coughs> pro squash players, um, uh, it's a football, um, rugby, MMA is a big one, so like ultimate fighting. Those guys are love this. For some reason, I don't know. Certain thing about data, but they want like strike force, um, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, so there's lots of sports specific things that we're going to get into, um, and then also the physio rehab. And we're not we're not sure if we're going to do it all or if we're going to partner with people or to share. Yeah, yeah. As a cyclist, the one of the things I measure is wattage. Yeah. Yeah, and that's just wondering if there's any correlation, like if you have one of these things on your ankle. Yeah. With, um, you know, we gave the measure water cues to this down at the hub level, you know, how much the power is actually transferred to the hub. Yeah, well, so watt, like power, the unit is watts. Yeah. So, yeah, we get watts from what you're doing. Is that, sorry? Is that yeah, no, that is yeah. it. So, so as a cyclist, we, you actually you have to measure this, the power of right. the cyclist is... Right, into your, like, yeah. put on your ankle. Is that right? Yeah. Theoretically, I, I think it's actually probably a pretty simple because you're <coughs> constrained motion. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, you can't get the force. But you can't get the force, you don't have your... Yeah. You don't have your force, that's right. You don't have your... Uh, yeah. You're going against gravity right, right, right. normally. Yeah. Or, or wind. Socks or or water. Yeah, I don't know. To be honest, I'm, I'm not the CTO. So I'm the <laughs> CDO. So, yeah. so have you considered combining the sensors with the camera in the smartphone to um, provide additional data? Yeah, we've talked, we've thought about a lot of you know sensors in the phone. It. So one idea was, I want to give away all my smaller ideas, but um, doing sensor fusion between the our device and some of the sensors in the phone. So if you strap the phone on your lower back, then we can get some, some of that form stuff that we were just talking about. Um, and then specifically to cameras, um, we've been talking to kind of a leader in the world of uh, visual tracking for sports. and. Yeah, there's lots of interesting things that we can do there for sure. Um, question. So I heard that you guys have acceler accelerometers and gyroscopes. Yeah. But I didn't hear you mention uh, temperature and you didn't mention uh, blood oxygen level. Yeah. And I also didn't mention uh, heart rate monitoring. Yeah. And I'm just curious uh, what were the reasons. Um, thanks. <coughs> so yeah, I didn't mention them because if we don't measure them. Um, <laughs> We could slap a million different sensors in here. Um, it would just make our lives more complicated and take longer. Um, for us, we think that what we're measuring right now is A, what's kind of most important for weight training, um, and B is kind of an MVP, so the, the least amount that we have to develop to get a viable product up there. Um, but yeah, we're also, forget if this is 
think this, this is, so I can find it. Um, we're also talking about putting the EMG um, signal processor in here so that we can tell if you've actually grabbed onto the bar or not, um, which will make our algorithms a lot, a lot better. And then, yeah, we can, we are, we've been thinking about and talking about integrating the heart rate into, into it as well. Um, we're working with a, with a guy down in the States who does HRV um, monitoring. And so there's a, a great kind of parallel between what he's doing and what we're doing. Um, and so, yeah, we've talked about that a lot. Sensors in the phone out there to do this? Yeah, so one of the big reasons that, or there's a couple, several reasons why we don't just slap the iPhone onto your arm. Uh, one, the throughput for the sensors is just not high enough to give you accurate metrics when you're working on it. So we have to sample at really high rates um, to give you useful metrics. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, I don't think the iPhone has a tire scope. Is that correct? I think it that's, doesn't that's true. Yeah. It doesn't. Magnetometer, no gyroscope. Yeah. Are you guys developing this for both iPhone and Android? Yeah. Have you guys looked at the new motion coprocessor thing that Apple's doing? Yes. That kind of goes <coughs> into an earlier point. Like the, the output, the throughput um, from their sensors is fast enough. Or sorry, there isn't enough um, frequency. The frequency isn't high enough. Did you comment on HRV as a parameter to follow? Um, I can't from personal experience. Um, I've heard lots of good things from really high-end people um, in sport. Um, I would say, without bashing our partner, like. He's great, he knows his stuff, and he's got an incredible product. Um, this isn't a bash on them at all, this is more like promoting us. We, for for strength specifically, if you look at HRV, it's telling you how hard your heart is working and whether you should or shouldn't be exercising. Word, so that's, I don't know, at this level, if, you're, if you care about strength, then we're like, you know, as close as you can get in our eyes to measuring strength. Um, so HRV is, um, it's good, but it, it's doing a different thing, I guess. Yeah. What, is, what is HRV in heart rate variability? Variability. So my like basic understanding, you can probably tell more, is basically gives you the, it's a super simplistic version, but your heart rate changes um, and if you're in a certain zone and you're like kind of ready to work out, and you're in a good place to work out. And otherwise, you, you should just relax. Is that, is that fair? Yeah. So it's the, the variability of the spacing between the beats. And right. So I've, I've just started reading about it, but it, it seems very interesting. So yeah. And it, it can play into a lot of health parameters. So it's, it's been a really good hmm. thing. Yeah. His his uh, product is called Bioforce. Um, so he uses a polar heart rate monitor and he has an app. He, he has an incredible following. Um, so we opened up our beta, our beta test um, to applications and within 24 hours after Joel, the guy who owns um, Bioforce, we had over a thousand people sign up and fill up our, um, fill up our, our application. Um, and they're like really high level, like pro athletes from around the world, pro coaches. So, and then it's largely to do with his kind of email blast promoting us. Yeah. Uh, have you considered to implement? So, I, I, as I understand, you're going to keep the data uh, from all the users. Yeah. On the back side, right? Yeah. And then you're going to have you considered to compare the data and then kind of uh, give quite a content and <laughs> you know, uh, to compete with friends and uh, yeah. athletes, you know. for sure. Yeah, we we really like the Strava model. Um, 
Strava's uh, uh, cycling app. Um, super simple, you just kind of press record, put it in your pocket, and you go cycling, and it records everything you do on GPS, uh, velocity. Um, you can compete almost automatically. I don't even know. You can compete. Turn it off. It, it actually tracks other people that have done the same course that you yeah. have, and you can actually compete the did that course like a year ago, yeah. and you know, well, you know, for a stretch of road, we'll actually say, you know, the best time, yeah, uh, you know, the, the best pace of someone that you know, you were the best person that I've ever done this stretch of road before. Yeah. So that personally, I I haven't <coughs> used many of these apps, but I really like the Strava app, and it is cool because you get this leaderboard, and you know, you're just biking home, and there's a certain stretch that's a challenge. And from this point to that point, you're <coughs> compared against everyone who's ever done that stretch of road. Um, and then you can share and compare with your friends. So yeah, we're definitely looking into that stuff. Cool. Yeah. All right, we're, we're a little over time, so one last okay. question. Yeah, uh, what are the advantages of your product versus uh, just tracking the weight and everything and the number of reps? Yeah. So, just tracking weight is like kind of an abstraction from strength. Um, and for some people who care about power or explosiveness or you know, speed of their movement, um, you don't really get that if you just track the amount of weight that you lift. And so like a kind of a dumb example, simple example, if you're doing a squat, um, if you're barely doing it and you can just get up, Versus if you're doing it like fast and powerfully, um, there's a big difference. But if you're just tracking the weight that you've got on the bar, like, you, you can't tell the difference. And so kind of in line with that, a lot of the coaches and trainers are really excited about it because if you tell somebody to do X, Y, Z, they can check the box, but you don't really have an understanding of how well they did it or how like with what intensity they did it. Um, and so if they're just dragging through every exercise, um, again, you can't see, the trainer can't um, see that unless they're physically there with the athlete. So now the trainer's going to be able to get, get a much more um, kind of nuanced perspective on how people are training. So in a sense, you track an effort. Yeah, effort. Yeah, there's different ways that you can kind of spin it, but yeah. Okay, thank you. If anyone wants to talk to him more, I'm sure he'll be around for a yeah. while. Thanks.